see. Oh man, should have done my hair a little bit before going on camera like this. So it looks so odd. All right, well, Bradley's not here. I was gonna put together some sort of, um, I need a haircut, I need some hairspray. Dang it, this camera is not as nice as the one I normally use. Anyway, what's up guys? Uh, it is ESVNOT. Bradley is away on his bachelor party. Um, he is probably partying it up. Uh, I hope he took some Z-Biotics and some liquid IV and everything that helps him stay hydrated. But I was gonna edit something together, <clears throat> you know, do a pre-recorded thing and then do something on my computer, but I'm too lazy and I got too much going on. And here I can respond to you guys in the chat, so maybe that's fun. Fire of his love, oh yeah. Looney Tunes, 9,000, hey ya, hey ya guys. What's up, how you doing? So this is gonna serve as our locks segment for the week. Dave Bo9 says, what, what? See, this is like the first time I'm interacting really with the YouTube chat, I'll be able to respond like this. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do uh, our, our picks against the spread. Bradley sent me his earlier before he uh, started traveling. So um, this is what we've got. Last week was pretty good for me, pretty bad for Bradley. He went 0-3 and, and I went 2-1 and because the Chiefs decided to fuck around with the uh, with the Jets and they did not cover the spread. I mean, Patrick Mahomes played one of the worst games of his career and uh, they still won that game. Zach Wilson played maybe the best game of his career. Also, we're not talking about what happened with the Giants. Uh, that game did not happen ever. So uh, just leave it out of your mind, out of your memory and let's move on. Fire of His Love says you're my favorite superhero. Well, I don't know about that. Pitchfork Dragon looking forward to Cowboys and 49ers. Yeah, that is a game where the schedule makers knew what they were doing to put that in prime time. Two of the biggest fan bases in the world. Uh, Nino TNT, hey Emma, what's up? Alejandro Morales, peace. Ben Fox, solo Emma secrets, give Saints hope, please, and thank you. I don't know about that. Um, Dr D Dylan Drogba, are you a sheep according to Evan Neal? Um... <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, I feel bad for the guy. I don't know why I root for Evan Neal so much. I just feel like he has the physical tools to really compete and be a great tackle in the league. But there's something up with the Giants offensive line coaching. It's been a really terrible few, like, that decade plus, actually, when you think about it. So, um, oh, Dave Bo9, Emma, are you going to upload that pick six you took on your phone? Um, maybe I will put it after this on the ESPN um on the ESVN Twitter because it's pretty great. I actually haven't gone and looked back at, at it. Um, ben Sheffer, I feel your pain now. I saw my Patriots get their shit kicked down in Dallas. Yeah, that sucks. Um, I think your luck is gonna turn around this week. Sorry to the Saints fan earlier. Um, Froggy V, Raiders winning the Super Bowl? That is not happening. I hope, I wish that they would fire Josh McDaniels. He seems to have some real issues with, with connecting with, um, with players. Uh, and Sam's, how excited are you for this barn burn tonight? I think Fields can do what he did last week, or do you think Fields can do what he did last week, or was that just the Broncos defense? Um, damn, I don't know. I mean, y you know, I, I don't necessarily believe in Fields as a professional quarterback in the NFL. Um, I don't think his throwing has taken enough of a step. And in this league, it's just about like, you know, being able to improve quickly enough. Not every team is going to give their guy um, enough time to develop, and especially because since Fields was drafted, like, Ryan Poles didn't draft Justin Fields, and they're going to be bad enough to take their own quarterback, potentially Caleb Williams, so I do think he's toast. Um, psychedelic laundromat, looking forward to the Dolphins-Giants game. Emma, my two teams, two favorite teams that I hope to see in the Super Bowl together one day. That would be amazing. Definitely not this year, but maybe this year for the... For the Dolphins, they do have that kind of team. Um, hi, Zeke. Paul Martin, can the Rams survive the Eagles? The Rams could upset the Eagles. I will tell you that is not one of my locks this week because the Rams have played very well. And um, that was a gritty overtime victory against the uh, against the, the, the Indianapolis Colts, who are not um, as bad of a team as people think. Their defense is still removed. Like, their defense last season was a top-ten defense, and they have most of those pieces in place. 
Uh, Brandon, 90, 1997, J.C. Jackson was a disaster for the Chargers, but Staley made the right move dealing him back to New England. He did. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, would you rather have him on your team or would you not? Uh, it, like, it seems kind of like they don't know how to use him. And I could see the Spanos family being too cheap to keep a guy on the roster that they don't think they see a future with. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the salary retention was on that trade, but... Bill needs them now that Christian Gonzalez, unfortunately, is out for the season. I'll respond to some of, a few more of these, and then I'll get right into it. Yeah, Calm Like a Bomb says early. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing nothing here. I'm alone in the office. There's nobody here. Matt went home. So, um, yeah, it's... No, no, no. Looney Tunes 900. Bradley is not just at a bachelor party. He is at his bachelor party. Bradley is getting married uh, in a few months. Brendan, 1997, are the Bengals cooked? Well, <clears throat> they, uh, if they don't make some offensive adjustments, they are. Um, I think the league really has caught up to what they're doing on offense, which is not very complicated in the first place. But maybe let's just get right into it. So yeah, last week um, was a decent week for me when it came to the locks. Uh, the Jaguars were three-point favorites uh, over in, in London, and they beat the Atlanta Falcons by more than that. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens destroyed the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I picked them plus three before, knowing that DTR was going to start. And uh, that line swung immediately to the Ravens being favorites once Deshaun Watson was ruled out. So I got lucky there, but at the same time, I might have even taken um, the Ravens as favorites. I, 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 I really think the Ravens are about to hit their stride a little bit, and they're just always so well-prepared and well-coached. Um, I did not win the Chiefs minus nine and a half against the Jets, as I mentioned at the outset. Zach Wilson played the, one of the best games of his career. Patrick Mahomes played one of the worst games of his career. And uh, that is what happened. So I went two and one last week. Bradley went 0 and three, which I'm just loving. Um, he took the Packers plus two and a half. They got smoked, uh, completely scrapped from the record that I also thought the Packers would win that game. Um, he picked the Miami Dolphins plus two and a half. They got smoked too by the Buffalo Bills. And he picked the Indianapolis Colts plus one, and they lost in overtime on a touchdown um, to the Rams. They did not cover that spread. We both survived last week with Survivor. I picked the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Bradley picked the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, what I've got for you this week, all right, hopefully I'm hitting my stride here. Um, I'm four and eight, Bradley's three, eight and one. So, you know, we got to hit our stride soon to get to be perceived as respectable. I have the New England Patriots plus one uh, in, at home against the, against the hobbled New Orleans Saints. Um, the Patriots are coming off a bad loss. I like Bill Belichick coming off a bad loss. Derek Carr is still banged up. What I really like is the Patriots defense against an, an offense that is not dynamic that is not creative with a defensive head coach who doesn't really know how to coach the offense very well. They can't seem to stretch the field. I know that the Pats secondary is banged up, but, um, you know, Bill Belichick knows how to coach around that, and they can play zone in ways that can hide some of those things. The Patriots are also at home, and uh, to have them as plus one, uh, uh, one-point underdogs there, I don't know. I thought that was a pretty good deal. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. So I'm picking the Patriots as well. I, I just, I've learned... Uh, way too many times to, uh, to to never doubt Bill Belichick. So I'm going for the Patriots at home, plus one, even though, or, well, that line may have shifted. Either way, it's basically a pick em. Um Plus one or minus one, either way, if I wrote it down wrong, that is still what I am taking. Um, dude, it's me, bro, says I got Pats because Derek Carr is, is busted ass. I mean, he's busted without his shoulder issues either as well. Um, Fork uh, Tail Devil says, Emma, thoughts on San Francisco versus Dallas? I think San Francisco is going to win. I almost picked them as one of my locks, but I did not. Bradley's second lock here can't give much of his analysis because he's not around, but he's picking the Baltimore Ravens minus four in Pittsburgh. I don't like that pick at all. I think that that's a bit of a trap game, and uh, they got smoked by the Houston Texans. I think that Mike Tomlin is going to have his guys ready. Uh, minus four is just way too large of a line, I think, for Pittsburgh at home. So 
Uh, hoping Bradley loses that, obviously. My second pick is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals minus three in Arizona. Now, I feel very queasy betting on the Bengals the way that they've looked. But I do think that the um, Arizona Cardinals are beginning to come back to earth. Uh, they, the Bengals need this game. <laughs> this is one of the only uh, – they have layups that, that they have uh, before their season falls apart, if not only. I think they play the Rams the week after that. But there's more tape on what the Cardinals are trying to do. Lou Anarumo is really the only thing that's keeping the Bengals competitive here, given like the fact that his defense is so damn creative. And, and they have a good amount of talent on there, too. They're deep. Um, the Bengals' offensive creativity is a joke, but the Cardinals' secondary is starting to become a problem for them. And I, once it becomes about talent, um, and it's like a one-on-one -on -one situation um, with Jamar Chase and potentially T. Higgins if he plays, and, and, and Burrow is able to put the ball on the money, hopefully, even if he can't be mobile, um, I do think that the Bengals win, and I think that they win by a field goal or more. So I'm picking the Bengals minus three. Uh, Bradley is going here with the Houston Texans plus one and a half in Atlanta. I like that pick as well. I mean, you know, I've been waxing poetically about C.J. Stroud. Um, and I do not feel the same way about a man named Desmond Ritter. I think he's looked quite bad. Uh, they're going to have to make the, the switch to Heineke soon, I believe, over there in Atlanta. So I do like Bradley's pick at, at uh, Houston plus one and a half in Atlanta. Plus that place is a dome. They don't really have a ton of fans there, so it's not the hardest place to play. Uh, my second pick is I'm going back to the well with Kansas City, even though they burned me. KC minus three and a half in Minnesota. I don't know, dude. I, I just feel like that line is too sh too too small for uh, the. Uh, let me just take a quick, quick sip of water. Mm. That's good. Water is good. Um, I just think that line is too small for uh, what. Uh, the 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 differences in between those two teams, specifically because. The Kansas City defense is legit, and um, Minnesota's gotten a little bit better at running the ball. I know now that Cam Akers is in the fold, and even before that, Alexander Madison had a better game before uh, once they they uh, they traded for Cam Akers, and he looked better. Good for him after all those like horrific messages that he received. But you know, for me, the Chiefs didn't play their best game last week. Patrick Mahomes is a psycho. He's going to be motivated to play better this week, and. Uh, yeah, I like it. Kansas City at Minnesota. I have KC minus three and a half. And Bradley's last pick, Tennessee at Indiana, or Indianapolis. <laughs> Indianapolis plus two and a half. The Colts plus two and a half. I like that pick, too. I think Tennessee is, you know, it's they're going to be in a lot of games this year, but the Colts are just more talented. So uh, to recap, I have the uh, Patriots plus one uh, at home against the Saints. I have the Bengals minus three in Arizona. I have the Kansas City Chiefs minus three and a half in Minnesota. Bradley's got Baltimore minus four in Pittsburgh. Houston plus one and a half in Atlanta. And the Colts at home plus two and a half. For Survivor, I'm going with Detroit at home against Carolina. Bradley's going with the Miami Dolphins at home against the Giants, who are a huge disappointment this year. With that, that's probably it for me. I'll read some IMs. Here we go. Not IMs. What do you call this? Chat? Um, yeah, uh, Pitchfork Dragon. Josh Dobbs has been playing like a man possessed. I agree, but I think that the Bengals' defense is real. Will says agreed. I think since he wins this one, but damn, it's a scary one to pick in Survivor. Who would have guessed that back in week one? I know. Um, Mick Mitt says, I hope you are all right, Emma. I hope so, too. Um, <laughs> Brendan, 1997, Vikings Chiefs is going to be a shootout. Um, Habib, I feel like Heineke is going to put that team together. Yeah, I would, I think he will play better than, um, than Ritter. Um, dude, it's me, bro, CMC running all over Dallas. Um, and Sam says, do you agree with Kelsey saying the NFL is overdoing the Taylor Swift thing? Of course I agree with that. It's total, it's it's the most cynical shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, they just want Swifties to watch. I mean, and it's working. I, I, I don't understand the obsession with Taylor Swift. I find it to be baffling to me. It feels like um, if you're a white girl and you don't have a personality, this is what you've decided is, is going to work for you. Like, okay, that sounds a little harsh. Um... It just feels, everything about what she represents feels just like anti, 
culture to me and like she's just so much more of a businesswoman than she is anything else um and I, I I there are so many artists with so much more like soul and interesting things to say in the world and it's like why are we rewarding the person who really never you know d doesn't say is kind of like a corporation into into herself and um did weigh in until politics until it was very convenient for her seemingly coveted a lot of like the the right-wing attention towards her so I, I mean again now it's you're forcing me to talk about taylor swift and i don't want to talk about taylor swift um how many breakup albums can you make i mean she hasn't even really made a hit album in like 10 years uh -huh. um what is your opinion on the, uh, well, I guess there, there are always hits because everyone buys it, but nothing that was as good as 1984, which I actually very much like. Great pop album. Um, Nino TNT, what is your opinion on the Drew Holiday to the Boston Celtics? Um, I was pretty bummed about that because the Knicks were supposedly in on that, although they're supposedly in on everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's a great fit. Like, the, the they're not going to replace Marcus Smart, but Drew Holiday's been an inconsistent shooter in the playoffs in particular, but his defense has never been questioned. So um, that that adding that kind of defense to the lineup, especially when, you know, Porzingis, it, it's, it's not, he's a new addition, not necessarily sure how long, you know, how much he can stay on the court for. Um, it, it, it's clear that it's the Celtics and the, and the Bucks who are, uh, a, a, I would say, a, a tier above the rest in the East. Mm. Um, Andrew K. Drew is a top tier defender for sure. Yep. Ed Ada says Niners minus three and a half. I do like that pick. Um, Ruben DaCosta is Silva. Should the Bears trade next year's first round pick or Justin Fields? The Bears should 100% not trade their next first round pick. They are the top team right now in, in line for a generational talent, and I don't say that lightly in Caleb Williams perhaps the most complete quarterback prospect to come out in the draft since Andrew Luck. And before that, it was like Peyton Manning. And, and that's what we're talking about here. More complete than Trevor Lawrence. Um, Sivastin, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. It used to be the 76ers, Bucks, Celtics. 76ers gonna drop off, maybe six or seven-ish seed incoming. I think so, I, Embiid seems pretty checked out. Um, Pitchfork's Dragon, at one point do we admit Brock Purdy is real? We don't admit that because I don't understand why we have to do this every time with 49ers quarterbacks before we realize it's the system. Look at Jimmy Garoppolo. All I heard from Niners fans is, look at how he wins. He wins. He's such a winner. Turns out it's, it's Shanahan who's the winner. <laughs> um, Derek, our MVP so far, far I got Allen. Man, MVP so far. I think Josh Allen would be my pick too. I think Josh Allen would be my pick too if I were to really select. I mean, before that, Micah Parsons. I mean, before he had the kind of two not so great games, he was at the start to be like the first defensive MVP since Lawrence Taylor, and he deserves that. Um, Derek says Lamar Jackson so much better. Um, Galeo's Telescope. Why couldn't Trey Lance do it then? Well, because he. He's a lot worse than Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's serviceable. He's he's a good player. But I'm not gonna be like he's elite just because he wins with the with Shanahan. Um Sri Vostin says, thoughts on Tush Push, unless you've already discussed it. I mean, I, I think it's getting a little overblown. Like the reason that the Eagles can do it so effectively is because the Eagles have the best offensive line since the Giants won the Super Bowl against in, in, in 2000 and seven eight like it's it's that it's that unreal so um i mean other teams like the giants tried to do it at the game i was at and it, it, it didn't work because they have the worst fucking line ever galeo's telescope what is your some of your for, favorite sports channels on youtube um you know i listen to the ringer for nba stuff um that's more auditory but i watch pro football talk every single day i think that they are the best um football show but i also listen to rich eisen 
sometimes I'll listen to Dan Patrick, but he's kind of a dick. Um, and, and then I, you know, Bradley's turned me on to the Athletic a little bit for their football coverage. Um, Mick Mitt uh, says Allen's great, but he turns the ball over too much. Yeah, but after that first game, I mean, he's only thrown one interception and he's thrown for like a million yards on very few attempts. Um, I'm going to wrap up in a second. Um, Pitchfork Dragons, the argument that you can't be a good quarterback if you have a good coaching system is ridiculous. Mahomes and Brady both suck then. That is not what I said. That is not what I said. But the fact that you are putting Brock Purdy in the same sentence as Mahomes and Brady says a little bit, a little bit more about your claim here, dude. Like, let's just slow the roll. If Brock Purdy wins a few Super Bowls, then we can talk about putting him in the same conversation as Mahomes and Brady. I said he's a fine quarterback. He's a fine quarterback. He's doing well. You guys are just, like, going nuts about Brock Purdy. Alex says Purdy does get compared to Brady a lot. I mean, just because he was drafted late? That's so silly. I watched that Giants game, by the way. Brock Purdy did not play well against the Giants, and the Giants are not good. He could have had, like, three interceptions, but the, the, the Giants players kept tipping them instead of actually getting them. Tom, uh, sorry, Emma, if it was over the line. Oh, no. Tom, you're all good. Sam, uh, Sam's just messing with you. Don't worry. Um... Okay, Wu-Tang Financial Watch the plays Brock Purdy makes versus the guy like the Holmes. It's the system with a guy competent to run it. Um, Galeo's Telescope, do you think Daniel Jones would be better than Purdy if he were on the Niners? <sighs> I don't know. I'm questioning everything with Daniel Jones right now. I mean, it was a historically horrific performance by the offensive line, but sometimes Jones has these games where he just can't process. Um, but he, you know, I, I do think Daniel Jones, the, the guys had the worst offensive line play of any starting quarterback for the past five years. So it's really just difficult to evaluate. Brendan says Jim Harbaugh to coach the Chargers next season, hit him or they'll promote, uh, a, a Kellen Moore, I think. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.